Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Let me know if this has been your mortgage experience. Was it better? Was it worse? Was it so-so? Because these are the conversations we need to be sharing so that others in the budgeting community who are looking to purchase their first home don't have to suffer and struggle and figure things out the way we did. What's up everybody, it's your girl Rochelle and I'm back with another video. Thank you guys for tuning in to my channel. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. You guys are the bomb.com. Now in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys how our debt-free journey is going. We are down to our last debt, which is our mortgage. And it is time to share with you how it's going so far in the month of April now. So we are three months in to the full new year and I want to share with you how the first quarter went. Now if you are considering buying your first home or maybe you just moved into your first home or maybe you're a long time homeowner, this is the video for you because I want to help you get excited and stay excited about paying off your mortgage as quickly as possible guys and for good reason because a mortgage is a whole scam okay I am going to share my mortgage history with you guys and let you know just how much we were able to pay off so far okay so let's rewind to the year 2007 that is the year my husband and I became homeowners we purchased our first home from his parents it was the home he grew up in so it was very special and they set us up for success by selling us the home at a very very reasonable price and so I want to share with you what our numbers looked like because our credit was not the best and we were still able to get inside of a home and save a lot of money now I first want to let you know some numbers because I'm I plan on sharing actual numbers here so first off let's start with the interest our interest is pretty high compared to what you might hear from other um, people who have mortgages our interest interest rate is 7%. Our total loan was $50,000. Our minimum payment is $542.47. That was how much we were responsible for paying back in the year 2007. We had a 30 year term loan. Here are the three things that our payment included. Principal, which is the actual cost of the loan interest I like to call it bad or negative interest and that is money that the bank is making off of you for allowing you to borrow money from them and the third thing is escrow I highly highly recommend rolling um, any of the things that come along with owning a home into an escrow payment if at all possible it does save you over the long term but you do have to keep your eye on it because sometimes those payments will all of a sudden increase and you need to be on the lookout for that so this is our opening numbers this is what it was like to buy our first home we were very excited our credit was not the best and so that's why we did have a seven percent interest now let's talk more about the home itself this home is just over 1,000 square feet. It is in an urban neighborhood. It has three bedrooms and 1.5 bathrooms. How we found it? We bought it from his parents. So that was awesome. A lot of the houses that we took a look at, they were very pricey and it. we wanted to keep ourselves free enough to still live the lifestyle we wanted, which included travel, and we did not want to be tied to a whole lot of debt. So we made the modest loan of 50,000. We were very happy with that. Now let's talk about just some interesting information to know um, about us. So first off, we were about 20 years old when we purchased our home. Actually, I had the numbers wrong, sorry. I was 20 years old and Micah was 21 years old. He was about to turn 22. Our average income was about $2,400 a month. And this is why when I talk about looking at your total monthly income and comparing it to how much home you pay for each month, it's important to keep that number, if at all possible, under 25% so that you can comfortably pay for the cost of your home and all the other bills that come alongside it. Now, next is our credit score. Our credit score, 
averaged about 625 at the time. At the time that we purchased our home, we had been married for two years. Really a little under two years, but just to keep it easy. We were a dual income, no kid household, which means we had a dink income dual income, no kids. So we set ourselves up pretty good overall. We did have a lot of other debt, but this is what our home pretty much consisted of. Now, let's talk about what our home is worth as of today. I wasn't able to find out what it was worth back then, but I know that as of today, it is worth about $146,000. So I am very excited about that number because the closer we get to paying this off, this number will continue to grow, hopefully grow, especially since we are making some improvements to the home. Okay, so I hope you guys are enjoying this video style. I really wanted to lay it all out and share with you guys our numbers, our mortgage journey. So before we dive into the real numbers, I want to share with you guys that I will be sharing at the end of this video just a few things that I wish I knew when we bought our first home. So please watch this video in its entirety, start to finish. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Let me know if this has been your mortgage experience. Was it better? Was it worse? Was it so-so? Because these are the conversations we need to be sharing so that others in the budgeting community who are looking to purchase their first home don't have to suffer and struggle and figure things out the way we did. There's really no need for that. Now we purchased our home in 2007 but I was a poor record keeper and this is you know just the reality of being a young homeowner I did not really pay attention to the fact that you should keep those type of records. So the data that I will be sharing with you guys will be from 2016 onward as those are the last five years of our mortgage and so those are the records I have access to two through our bank. Uh, over the course of these years, we will be looking at what our starting balance was at the start of every new year, what the end balance was, what the difference was, if we paid any late charges, if there were, what the minimum payment was, wasn't if, what the minimum payment was, and the total payments as well as the credit interest, which is something I did not pay attention to until I looked up our information. Okay, so let's rewind it back to the year 2016. Our starting balance was $42,198.23. Now, at this time, we were 8, 9, 10. We were about nine years into our 30-year mortgage, and we had dropped about just under $8,000 off of our mortgage. And I really don't think that's good, but we'll get, we'll dive in more and talk more about that in a minute. Now, by the end of 2016, we had gotten the mortgage down to a whopping $41,435.33. That meant we had a difference of $762.00 and 90 cents. And that just speaks to the level of interest that we were paying at that time. Um, pretty, pretty ridiculous. And I will share more about that later, but let's just keep moving forward. This is the reality of having a mortgage and not, not being responsible with the mortgage and the payments and being gazelle intense. Let's see, late charges. We had three late charges that totaled $48 and 39 cents. We did not have auto payments. We would pay it when we got paid and sometimes the paydays didn't correlate with the due date. We were definitely living paycheck to paycheck and we would be late. We were late three times. So I'm, it's the reality y'all. Anyway, our minimum payments. So for every month, it was $542.47 per month. Fair minimum, gotta pay it to stay green. Total payments made for the entire year. This is the really sick part, y'all. <laughs> Total $6,504. That's right. So even though we only knocked off $762.90, we made total payments of $6,504. And that's once again, directly related to that 7% interest. So it just goes to show what happens when you are literally being ate up by interest. So if at all possible, if you are considering a home, make sure that you are paying attention to your mortgage payment. 
I thought that we were making a very large mortgage payment every month, meaning the whole 542 was going to our balance, and it wasn't. <laughs> the reality was that it wasn't. I'll share our mortgage breakdown also with you guys in the next few minutes. Now, here's the one good thing that came out of um, having an escrow account. Uh, we accumulated credit interest monthly by having a certain amount of money set to the side for our home insurance, PMI, and the like. And that averaged 10 cent monthly. Now let's move on to 2017. 2016 was kind of shoddy. Our starting balance was the 41,000 four thirty five and thirty three cents and we got it down to by the end of the year forty thousand three hundred thirty six dollars and eighty six cents that meant that we knocked one thousand and ninety eight dollars and 47 cents off of our mortgage. The good news is there were no late charges and our minimum payment actually went up to $567.02 per month. Total payments for the year came to $6,804 and we accumulated about nine cents of interest per month from the escrow. So another not so great year, not really doing anything, not really moving the needle like we could. At least we did knock $1,000 off of our mortgage. But like I said, we just did not know any better. We were just making the bare minimum payment. We felt locked into a mortgage that we would have forever. And we weren't serious about getting out of debt. Now let's move on to 20. 18 starting balance forty thousand three hundred thirty six dollars and eighty six cents we ended the year at thirty nine thousand two hundred fifty four dollars and twelve cents that meant we had a difference of one thousand eighty two dollars and seventy four cents we had zero late charges and our minimum payment went up again to $569.38 per month. Total payments came to $6,832.56 and we averaged about 12 cents in credit interest per month. So what this pretty much tells me is our mortgage payment kept going up little by little, year over year. And one of the reasons that happened is because at the end of every year, your bank will send you a statement of your escrow history and it will create a new average of what it thinks you should pay from out of your mortgage every month to cover your escrow expenses. So our escrow, we were always in having a shortage, an escrow shortage. And so the bank would try to catch up and match our mortgage payment to um, meet the demands of the escrow. And we failed miserably. We did not pay it in full. We made no extra payments directly to our escrow or to our principal. So this is what, this is the reality of what could happen if you're not on top of your mortgage. It gets better, I promise. Let's move on to 2019. Starting balance is 39,000, actually it was the same, $39,254.12 cents. Our ending balance for 2019 was $38,093.10. That left us with a difference of $1,161.02. Once again, we had zero late charges and our minimum payment ran up again to $601.97. At this point, I'm sick to my stomach. We, I, at this point are just making the bank money hand over foot. Total payments for that year came to $7,223.64. Average credit interest was about 15 cents. So those were, that's a snapshot of our mortgage experience, our mortgage journey from 2016 to 2019. At this point, I feel very discouraged. I feel like I'm not making any progress with our mortgage but I know we can do better. Okay, so now let's bring it a little more current and talk about the last two years. So you know the routine, start and balance for January 2020, which I can't believe was more than a year ago now, time is just flying, and that was $38,093.10. Our ending balance was $28,788.95. Big difference, right? See what happens when you are able to get rid of your debt? 
by getting rid of our consumer debt, medical debt, school loan debt, and anything else that popped up. Taxes, we were paying back taxes every month for six years. We were able to really put a dent in our mortgage. 2020 was unfortunately the best and worst year <laughs> that I have lived. Um, so this left us with a difference of $9,304.15. And just um, an FYI, we did this in literally six months, not even a whole year. We became consumer debt free in July of 2020. And from August on, we we really hit it hard. July was a three paycheck month. I will never forget that. That was like the most money we ever brought in in my life. And we threw most of it at the mortgage. Okay, so once again, no late charges. And our new minimum payment now dropped back down under $600 to $596.64. Whew. I'm so happy. Uh, total payments for the year still top 7,000. It was $7,159.68. And we averaged about 14 cents in credit interest. FYI, the most interesting mortgage payment that I made in 2020 was the mortgage payment where we paid just one penny. That's right, they let you make payments. Our, our bank is pretty good about that. They let us um, make payments no matter how much or how, how little or how much. And so I made a payment of one penny because I wanted to see the number go under 30,000. I remember it being at 30,000 and I made a pay, I only had a penny in my bank account and I said, you're gonna get this penny and it dropped the balance to $29,999.99. It was beautiful. So um, when you've been looking at your mortgage be 40 something thousand dollars and 30 something thousand dollars for like 10 years, to see it in the 20s, there's just no better feeling. Well, there is zero, but you get my drift. You get my drift. Okay, so now let's talk about 2021. Now, of course, this is only gonna be from January 2021 to March 2021. So this is three month progress. So we made this amount of progress in about six, five to six months last year. Let's see what we did so far this year. Our starting balance was $28,788 and 95 cents and our ending balance as of march 31st 2021 is twenty two thousand six hundred two dollars and six cents this was a difference of six thousand one hundred eighty six dollars and eighty nine cents so far we have zero late charges and our minimum payment each month five hundred ninety six dollars and sixty four cents that's right it's still the same and that's because we received our escrow shortage letter in the mail in december 2020 and it said hey you guys were short two hundred dollars for the year you have two options you could increase your mortgage payment back up to like six hundred and one dollars or you can just pay us the two hundred dollars right now and because we were more financially sound I was able to cut them a check for $200 and keep our mortgage payment the same so that is the beautiful thing about having a savings account and I'm so happy to be where we are right now total payments so far is actually the same $6,186.89 and on average our interest is sitting at about 13 cents so let's talk about the payment breakdown so let's talk about our day one payment which was $542 dollars and 47 cents remember i told you it was broken down into three categories but guess how much went to principal a measly 76 dollars and seven cents boom that right there is your problem and that right there is why it's so important to look at your mortgage numbers and if you don't understand them call in some help guys <laughs> call in the calvary <laughs> next up is the interest the interest 200 $46. Ah, try not to mess up this video. I'm not perfect. $246.60 and our Ooh, and our escrow totaled $219.80. So a good portion of our mortgage payment every month just made the bank richer and lined our escrow account. We were able to be more intentional with our mortgage payments and let's see how things changed. First off, let's talk about the fact that we don't pay PMI anymore because our home, we've paid off more than half of our mortgage. So the PMI should naturally fall off if it doesn't call your bank guys call your credit union and make sure that they are doing what they need to do so 
Now that we have a new mortgage payment of $596.64, we send $173.42 to principal, which is still bad, but it's better than that. Interest is $149.25 and escrow gets $273.97. Now I wanted to share with you guys our amortization schedule, which is my baby, okay? I printed out a fresh one for the video. I've got my high highlighters here. What I've done is I went ahead and highlighted the progress that we've made so far only up until the year 2016. This is the starting date September 2007 for our first mortgage payment and you can see that our balance was $50,000 and by paying our first payment of $332.65 only $40 dollars and 98 cent went to principal 291 dollars and 67 cent went to interest brought our balance down by not even 50 dollars the first month 49,959 dollars and two cents so it's just really sick this is why i say mortgages are a scam and my best anike voice is the ghetto i just i think it's disgusting <laughs> I just cannot believe that someone can make this much money off of you. To me, this is no different than a payday loan. It's just the fact that you need a home to live in and I just feel like it's it's terrible that they can take full advantage of you in this way. Look at the progress that was made from the year 2007 to the year 2016. Yeah, you can see a lot of progress was made, guys. Two full sheets covered. Three full sheets covered. And here we are. The balance came down to $42,000. $233.66. This is as of January 2016 and it actually wasn't supposed to be paid until April 2018. So by us making small payments, we were not making major payments, it still got us further along amortization schedule. So we were two years and three months ahead on our 30 year plan. Now let's talk about 2017. We jumped ahead. We were able to get another one, two, three, four, five, six, Six, seven, eight, nine lines down and stay two years ahead. So by January 2017, our balance was down to $41,438.70 or roundabout. And we weren't supposed to reach that till January 2019. Uh, January 2018, we got the balance down to around about $40,408.83. And we weren't supposed to be down to that um, balance until December 2019, which meant that we were a year and 11 months ahead. Okay, so now by the year January 2019, the balance had come down to 39,000, round about $39,310.91. And we weren't supposed to reach this balance until November 2020 last year. So that meant that we were about one year and 11 months ahead on our payment schedule. January 2020 meant that we got the balance to around $38,140.46. Did that and we weren't supposed to have gotten to that balance until October 2021, which is later this year. So we are one year and 10 months ahead at this point. Okay, so now we've arrived to the best, best part. Um, this is the most progress we've made. And that was in the month of between January 2020 and January 2021. So check out that progress. Yeah. This will be your last I did not realize how much progress we made last year. It's just crazy to look at it. Okay, moving on to February. February 2021, we were able to increase it even more to seven years and 11 months ahead. March 2021, we were able to grow that number even more to eight years and three months ahead. And just to show our progress in 31 days, we were able to grow it even more to nine years and two months ahead. This will be your last Wow, wow, wow. So guys, this is our progress. This is how far we have come in the mortgage payoff journey. Beep, 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 
and we are this is nine pages of money that we have paid to people so I highly recommend that you print out your free copy of an amortization schedule you can do it for your mortgage loan your car loan your student loan debt whatever you want whatever debt you have do a schedule print it off I'll leave a link in my description if you want to get a free copy of yours to see just how much interest you might be paying now of course the numbers might not be spot on but it will be a roundabout number now before I go I just quickly wanted to share some things that I wish I knew before we get our first home now we actually wanted to buy our first home because we realized we were paying too much in our apartment our apartment rent back in 2005 went up to $1,000 a month and we were like oh, you crazy pack the stuff let's go get the kitty cats and let's roll here's my tips here we go pay for your home in cash or with as much cash as you possibly can secondly buy as little house as you can or the choice that makes the most sense just because you can afford it doesn't mean you should don't wait until you're older or have a stable job to buy a home we thought that it was something that you had to be a certain age to acquire but the reality was we were between 21 and 22 years of age and we had purchased our first home and I'm so glad that we had this opportunity to become homeowners and to be able to say that we might be debt free we will be debt free before we turn 40 is just a beautiful thing next always run the numbers and prove your credit and don't check don't trust anyone double check all the numbers double check everything all the paperwork consider other options if you travel a lot or get a roommate or tenants but don't use this as an excuse to get more house um, and it kind of scares me because I don't think people realize the huge mortgage that they are taking on until it's too late and maybe you are able to buy more house I'm talking to those they are living paycheck to paycheck but they want to have their own home just be really careful guys Take all the advice with a grain of salt. Even the advice that I'm bringing to you guys in today's video, it might not apply to you personally. I'm just sharing what worked with us, what areas we failed in, and what areas we were successful in. Don't be afraid to take the sound fixer upper. Um, don't feel like you always have to buy the house that's turnkey red. That's actually the secret, the heck, as to how we were able to grow our net worth so quickly is because we bought cheap and we paid off our mortgage quickly um, and we're almost done with it and we are renovating that is literally the life hack a lot of people flip homes and that's what they do so get in on that also no one is time to go when our apartment rent went up to a thousand dollars we knew that we weren't paying th four digit rent okay like not back in those days <laughs> when the average apartment was like seven no to count to count your blessings don't assume you know it all the reason i say don't assume you know it all is literally by me getting prepared to do this video and bring it to you guys i found out what mortgage credit interest really meant and that was just a learning curve for me so those are the tips and tricks those are the things that I wish I knew when we bought our first home so here is my debt free chart if you watched my very first debt video debt free journey video years and years and years ago you will know that this was one of my favorite charts to cling to to keep me motivated to pay off debt and so I am bringing it full circle by using this chart to complete our debt free journey so we are already at the halfway mark So not much progress, but it's still one line covered. I'm so glad you stayed to the end. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know if this is a video that you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next mortgage update. But until then, peace, love, and budget.